Hi guys, welcome back. I am in, in my car again, and, but I'm waiting for my granddaughter. She's serving at our church. And so I thought I'd take a moment to kind of reintroduce myself. Um, it's been a long time since I started my channel. And when I started my channel, it was completely different. I was having weight loss surgery. More specifically, I had the vertical sleeve gastec gastrectomy where they go in and they take out half your stomach. It's completely different than the um, bypass. Sorry, uh, can't think straight. Um, it's completely different than the bypass, but it is still a very invasive weight loss surgery, but not quite as invasive as the uh, gastric bypass. I'm sorry, I'm going completely blank. So the beginning of my journey, and I will try to insert some pictures. I started out at about 428 pounds. Um, I was super morbidly obese, obviously. Um, I was miserable. I hurt. Um, and I, I'm having byproducts of that now, you know, the effects of not being at a healthy weight. and like most people that are super morbidly obese, I didn't just get that way because I mindlessly ate. I did eat a lot. Um, I had some health issues. I'm not making excuses, so I'm gonna cut that off right here. I own it. I may not have started my weight gain, but I finished it. And my philosophy was, if I'm going to do the time, I'm going to do the crime. Um, I was gaining weight. We couldn't figure out why. I had a doctor that, well, first I didn't have a, a good doctor. Um, I finally went to the doctor and I was like, I think it's my thyroid. No, 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 it's not your thyroid, it's not your thyroid. I said, but you know, I've got all the symptoms. And he's a good doctor. He just was not good for me. Um, so I kept gaining weight and I kept gaining weight. I would try diets and they would work great. I could lose 30 to 40 pounds and, and then it would stop. I was working out the best I could at 428 pounds. Um, I tried everything I needed to try. I wish I had the money I spent on LA weight loss because that was a, a big, big bit of money. And I, I had kind of a, I won't get into that in this video, but I had a, a moment. Um, I was awakened in the middle of the night um, by a voice that told me that I was going to be dead by the time I was 35 if I did not get help. That was one of a couple of uh, divine interventions that I had. Um, I'd lost my father due to being obese and I was bigger than my dad. And I remember I remember looking when my father died and we couldn't even get the casket we wanted for him because he needed a bigger one and I, I you don't think about stuff like that um, and he'd lost a bunch of weight and he still had to have a, a larger casket um, that hurt and that was hard and of course I gained a little bit more weight I'm an emotional eater and I own that. <laughs> I had a special needs child and I ate my emotions through, you know, the frustrating and, and the hard times. Um, and that's, that's who I was. That's who I still am. And it's a battle that I fight every single day. Um, I had decided to have the surgery and it was the best decision for me. I'd lost 200 pounds and then I had um, some plastics done 
I had what they call uh, the fleur de lis and a body lift. Uh, I had the most phenomenal surgeon in the world. I know if you've watched any of my videos before, I've seen the praises of Dr. Swetnam in uh, Rogers, Arkansas, Bentonville, Fayetteville area. He's amazing and he gave me a new lease on life. He took off 42 pounds of skin. Um, insurance didn't pay for it. That was a battle. They said, yes, we know you need it for medical reasons, but we're still not gonna pay for it. So I had that done and then I started gaining again and I let myself get up 60 pounds. So when I started this journey I'm on now, I was 255 pounds, my lowest weight since this whole journey started was 199 pounds. So that was like a big deal to me. Um, it was huge. I got into Wonderland, but it did not last long. Um, I'm sure these people are wondering what I'm doing talking just in here by myself. <laughs> but anyway, um, it was nice, but it didn't last long things have come up. Um, oh, and by the way, I was diagnosed. I found another doctor that helped me significantly before my surgery. And that's why I was good to go ahead and have the surgery. Um, it's because there was an underlying thyroid disorder um, that helped contribute to the weight gain. It didn't cause all of it. I'm not going to blame something else for something that I was a contributing factor for. Um, but anyway, I, I lost a couple hundred pounds and then I gained about 60 back. Um, I got back into some bad habits. I got back into not weighing and measuring my food. I got into eating larger portions. I still couldn't eat like I did prior to the surgery, but I could, I could eat a lot more. Um, and then I started having back issues bad back issues. Um, matter of fact, I had surgery a year ago. I had 100% nerve compression. My MRI, I'm, my spine is riddled with arthritis. And, you know, I got to the point where, and I can handle an, a large amount of pain. Um, my pain level in certain areas are almost dangerous. Um, and this is kind of what this has gotten to. I had uh, gotten to the point where my leg was going numb um, and I would fall. And I had a couple of pretty bad falls, one that kept me off my feet for six weeks. And, you know, even if you're eating healthier, being off your feet and not moving at all for six weeks, except for good to go to the bathroom, um, that can really take its toll. So I had a lot of contributing factors and I had gotten up to about 260 and that was my wake up call. I was like, whoa, you know, before too much longer, I'm gonna be 300 pounds again. And all the money I spent, all the hard, hard work was for nothing. And I said, I can't do it. And I got on keto. I do dirty keto and I'm going to explain why. What works for one person isn't going to work for another. With me, if I do strict keto, <laughs> I get, I'm a very competitive person. I will compete with myself. I will compete with myself for the day before. I got so hard on myself, it was not feasible for me to be able to do this lifelong. Zero net and total carbs. I mean, it, it, it got ridiculous. And when I fell off the wagon, I fell off the wagon and I fell off of it hard. So that was a big deal. Um, and that also 
I gained a lot back, obviously. So my husband and I are getting ready to celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary. And for my 50th birthday, I was finally able to do something that I've wanted to do since I was a little girl. And that was go to Disney World. <laughs> I was the biggest baby there. <laughs> I mean, I cry now thinking about it. When I saw Cinderella's castle for the first, I mean, it was the most incredible experience. Um, and it was painful. And then we went again the next year because I don't, I, I really wish we would have waited, but we went and it was a wonderful Mother's Day gift for my kids. Um, they bought my ticket for the parks and it was great. And the second time was harder because <laughs> I was already starting to, you know, the, the nerve compression in my back and everything, it, everything had amplified. We went during the, the pandemic when it was like, that was the best time to go by the way. So we went in 21 and 22, I think. Yeah. So I couldn't do that. I, I mean, I'm at this point now, I might be able to do Disney, but I couldn't. So anyway, what I was getting to is our 30th wedding anniversary is coming up and I wouldn't mind going back to Disney or somewhere else. You know, my husband and I, we've never been overly wealthy. Um, Disney was, was the biggest struggle like to go financially um so I want to do something special we didn't get a honeymoon um we didn't you know we didn't do anything special for any other anniversary so this is our 30th and I thought you know what I want to go somewhere even if it's you know to Dollywood um I'm a roller coaster fanatic I am an adrenaline junkie um so I said okay let's do something and I want to be at my goal weight so I am about 22 pounds away from being at the 199 again I've already lost uh, about 33 ish pounds um since September and I am doing a dirty keto so I won't get so obsessed uh, with those numbers. I can be a little bit more lenient because I need that. I, I, I need something that is going to, I'll be able to maintain the rest of my life. I am doing the injections Manjaro. Um, and before I get any hate on that one, I am a type two diabetic. My blood sugar is under control, but there are very few things I can tolerate. I, I've done well on GLP ones. And I think that's why the Manjaro is helping so much. Um, I did do Ozempic and I was on that for a couple years and I could never take the full dose. I would get so sick. Um, I did metformin and I get sick thinking about metformin. It was, I could not tolerate it whatsoever. Um, I did Victoza and I did okay with Victoza. I did and I don't really remember why. I think there was something else that came out that was better and it wasn't controlling my blood sugar like I needed it to. Um, but right now my numbers are looking good on my blood sugar. So that's good. The Manjaro has been a complete an utter blessing to me. Um, I This week I took a 7.5. Last week I took a 5. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is there was this big um, issue with the savings card. I'm not going to get into that because I don't know all the details. Uh, but I am moving up to the 7.5. But because of this issue, there's been a lot of people that have not been able to get it. Um, because of the, this, this issue with the savings card. So, um, mine worked and the prescription was for the five. So I went ahead in fear of, cause there's been a shortage, there's been all this. So in fear of not being able to get the 7.5 when it comes due, I went ahead and picked up my five. 
but what I'm doing right now is I'm alternating 7.5 to 5, 7.5 to 5. It's just what I'm doing now. It's it's working. So um, I'm going to continue to do that until I run out of the 5. I think this is my last refill anyway on the 5. So then I'll be moving up to the 7.5. Then I'll be moving up to the 7.5 all the time. But I do it in my arm. I find that that is the best location for me. I've tried the thigh. I've tried the stomach. The stomach, the stomach was weird. I got a massive bruise and I'm talking massive bruise and it stayed for like three weeks. And I thought that was really weird. I've never had that in my arm. So I do, I try to rotate my arm. I've got, I write it down in my uh, weight loss, uh, lose it app, which arm I do and what milligrams. But I also have read about scar tissue can form in that, in the shot location. Um, I'm sorry, I'm real fidgety. Uh, so I'm trying to keep my hand up here where I won't be messing with everything. Um, so I am rotating and I also get allergy shots in my arms. And so sometimes it's, it's a little painful to do in my arm. Um, but that seems to be where I have the best luck. I'm going to do my thigh, I think next week, um, because I'm getting my allergy shot on Monday and I do my injection for Manjaro on Tuesday. So there's, that's the reason. Um, it really depends on what day I do my allergy shots because I still swell up. I've been on those for a couple of years and I still swell up a little bit. Um, but yeah, so there's a little bit about me. I, I totally go into scroll mode and my mind wanders. Um, but I started out my journey on July 31st, 2013, 11 years ago. And I weighed in at 428 pounds. Um, I wore a five and six X. I still wear a bigger size, but I prefer them bigger, you know. Um, I like my clothes to be big on me. Um, but I've lost, I've lost more than half my body weight. I've gained it some back, but that's the thing. I didn't come this far, to only come this far. And I, I have a grandchild now that I want to be able to do things with. I have a life. <laughs> I want to be able to get on you know, Tower of Terror and Rock and Roller Coaster if we go back to Disney and, you know, I want to be able to hang with them when they're walking those parks because that's a lot of walking. I want to be able to be there for her. You know, my grandmother was way much older and I still have good memories of us doing things together because she was, you know, pretty healthy for a long time. But, you know, goodness, she was 70 when I was born. So, you know, Addie was born in 2013. So it was, it was just a, I was only 33, right? Yeah, 33. <laughs> um, 43, excuse me. But anyway, I just... I needed to get back into control. I needed to remember where I was before. I needed to look back at the girl that was so broken. The girl that let herself get to be 428 pounds so nobody could hurt her anymore. I had to remember where I was and I had to remind myself that I can't go back to the place that I prayed myself out of. 
I I want to document this so when I can look back on a day that I'm really struggling and I can say, look how far you've come. Look where you were. You never took the easy way out and don't let anyone tell you that weight loss surgery is the easy way out because if they knew what they were talking about, they wouldn't say that because that was the hardest thing I ever had to do. I would spend hours the night before planning out my food for the next day, checking my macros, making sure I got enough protein, making sure, to some people it may be the easy way out, but those are the ones that gain it all plus some back. Yes, I had weight gain, but I went, but I caught it before I gained all the weight back. It's not easy. Don't let anyone tell you it is easy. There's so much judgment out there. There's so much judgment about even this medication, the Monjaro. Like I'm on Monjaro for two reasons. One, because I'm a type two diabetic, period. But the second is because of my weight because when my weight increases, so does my blood sugar, so does my blood pressure, so does everything. My comorbidities, I think they're called. Don't judge. Just because you see someone taking a weight loss medication or you see someone that had weight loss surgery, it's not the easy way out. And until you've walked in those shoes, you cannot judge that person. I struggled. I struggled with the stigma of it's the easy way out. It's not. It is hard work and you have to devote yourself 10,000% because if you go into it with a mindset that way and you don't fix what caused it, you're going to fail, period. Um, I'm sorry, I really got on a rampage there, but until you've walked in someone's shoes, don't judge. I've been judged. I was judged when I was fat because, oh, she must have no self-control. It's disgusting. I actually had overheard a woman tell her children, see, that's what happens when you have no self. I mean, it was cruel and I could hear her. And I turned to her and said, are you teaching your children to judge? You don't know me. You don't know anything about me, but you're judging me. I'm sorry, there's another rampage. <laughs> don't, you don't know someone's circumstances. Be proud of them that they are taking control of their life. If you're a praying person and believe in the power of prayer, pray for them because I promise you they need it. They need it because if they're not fixing the mental aspect they're going to struggle and they're going to struggle hard. I know. I know this from experience. And if you're on the struggle bus and you need someone to talk to, reach out to me. So much has happened since I started this journey and so much happened leading up to this journey. I lost a parent. I had to learn how to live in a world without my dad. I became a grandmother. I had a divorce in my family. I had marital ups and downs. I had spiritual starvation, lack of a better term. I've lost a lot of people and and things that I thought made me who I was. Reach out if you need someone to talk to. Because I'll talk to you. If you need someone to tell you that you're doing great and that you are worth this fight, reach out to me because you are worth it. 
You are so incredibly worth it. You deserve this chance. You deserve a second chance at your life. And you're not too old and you're not too far gone and you're not too broken. Be who you were intended to be and you will set this world on fire. Thank you for listening to me ramble. Thank you for the ones that have supported me and to the ones that have sent me the hateful words. Thank you. Because you showed me who not to be. You showed me, you reminded me that you don't judge someone just because you see their videos on the internet. I do apologize that I struggle with looking at the camera. I have an eye problem. And... Um, I was born cross-eyed and so my eyes don't always want to focus and so I want to apologize up front and bother some people and I'm also not used to using my phone like this so I'm struggling to remember to look the cameras over here and I'm also watching the people around me because I have to go in when church is over and pick up my granddaughter um, but just remember I taught my little Addie this from the time she could talk that in a world you can be anything, be kind. Because you don't know what someone's walking through. You don't know what happened in someone's life that made them feel that food was their best friend and their comfort. You don't know who's let them down. You don't know what someone you don't know what's going on in here. You don't know what's going on in here. So be kind. And if you need someone to talk to, I have my contact information below. Email me. Snail mail. Doesn't matter. I'll do my best. I guess that's it. This kind of video went a completely different direction than what I thought it was going to. Um, but I just want to reintroduce this myself. I'm Michelle. I'm 53. I'll be 54 in June. <laughs> I don't think about it. I'm a Gen Xer through and through. Except for I do care what people say. Um, but welcome to my channel. Please, if you have any questions for me about weight loss, about, um, I'm a type two diabetic. I have post-traumatic stress disorder. I suffer with depression. I have metabolic X syndrome. I have high blood pressure. I've got a rapid heart rate arrhythmia. Um, I've got a lot of issues, <laughs> but I'm here. I'm here to fight my battle. And I'd love to be friends and to let you know that you're not alone. I hope y'all have a wonderfully blessed day. Find something to be grateful for today. Find someone to be grateful for today and tell them you're grateful for them. Be the light in a dark world. And like I said earlier, in a world you can be anything. Be kind. Bye.